my beautiful lovelies. Hello, it's Emmy. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be making egg coffee, also known as Swedish egg coffee or Scandinavian egg coffee. Now, what is that exactly? Well, it's actually a process of brewing a cup of coffee using an egg. And it does contain an egg, but it's more for clarifying the coffee. So I've never had this kind of coffee before. I'm very curious to see if the egg lends any flavor to the coffee itself. From my understanding, the egg is mostly for purifying the coffee. So this technique was brought over by Scandinavian immigrants to the U.S. and it's still popular in the Midwest and in areas like Minnesota and Michigan. So big thanks to lovely Travis for sending me this suggestion. He said growing up his grandparents used to make this style of coffee all the time. All right, so let's go ahead and make this. So the first thing we're gonna need is of course some coffee. You don't have to use anything fancy. You can use the stuff that comes in the big tubs. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna use my grinder because this is what we have and grind myself a bunch of coffee. I'm gonna grind enough for a couple cups of coffee, but you can use up to a cup and a half of ground coffee for one egg. The egg will clarify that much. So that would be enough to make about six cups of coffee. So gotta grind my coffee. This is a bit of a workout. My kids love to do this. Yeah, quarter cup of ground coffee. Smells lovely. So in a bowl, we're gonna take our egg, crack it. Now we're gonna put the shell in there too. Crazy. <laughs> now we're gonna mush this all up. Some recipes don't call for using the shell, just the egg, but I wanna use the shell. I really wanna see what happens here. So there's the shell, all mushed up in there. And now I'm gonna add my ground coffee and mix this into a paste with a little splash of water as well. And at this point, it looks kind of like brownie batter. It smells amazing though. Just like brownie batter. Now, I'm gonna bring a couple cups of water to a boil. This technique not only is supposed to clarify the coffee, removing a lot of the sediment, but it's also supposed to clarify the taste. It's supposed to remove all traces of bitterness, and it's supposed to have a really kind of nice creamy mouthfeel as well. So it all sounds perfect, right? Waiting for the water to come to a boil. <laughs> so the first time I saw using an egg to clarify a liquid was way back in the day when I used to watch cooking shows with my mom and my brother on PBS on Saturdays. And Jacques Pepin actually showed how to use this technique of using an egg white to clarify soups. So now I'm gonna add my coffee egg sludge. To the water. Smells great. And we're gonna let this simmer for a few minutes, up to 10 minutes. I'm gonna reduce the heat a little bit. Through all the steam, we'll see if I can explain why and how this works. So the albumin, or the white part of the egg, at high temperatures, the proteins break apart or denature. So the egg white proteins, now broken, bind onto the impurities that are in this fluid, which would be all the little coffee sediments and the bitter qualities. And you can see that there's this kind of weird looking mass that's happening here. So crazy. This has been boiling for a few, several minutes now, and I'm gonna turn off the heat. I'm just gonna decant this so you can see everything better. Look at those chunks, isn't that bonkers? Look at all that. Whoa. Now I'm gonna add some cold ice water. And that's supposed to make all the floaty bits sink to the bottom. So before this gets too cold, let's pour ourselves a cup of coffee. Look at that. Look at the color. It's a lot lighter than a normal cup of coffee. It is kind of an amber and all the particles are staying at the bottom. Amazing. Look at that. Beautiful. So as you get closer to the bottom, you do start to get chunks. So I'm going to put my filter on there. And this is what's left. All the eggshells, egg pieces, and all the coffee. I usually drink my coffee black. All right, cheers. Mmm, that's nice. 
It is very, very smooth. It's still full bodied and full of coffee flavor, but the bitterness has definitely diminished a lot. But it doesn't remove any of the coffee flavor. It's still roasted and nutty, slightly chocolatey. Really good. And there's a little bit of change in mouthfeel, I would say. Not necessarily creamy, but more bodied, more slippery feeling. <laughs> Mm. it's really good. And if you're like me and you drink your coffee black, I think you'll really, really like this. It's a super smooth cup of coffee. Mm. Travis, thank you so much for introducing me to this technique. I think I'm definitely going to add it to my coffee making repertoire, especially if I'm cooking or making coffee for a lot of people. We don't have a coffee maker. We have a French press, but it's more challenging to make pots of coffee for large numbers of people <laughs> when you only have like a two cup French press. So I think this would be a great idea if we're having company. When I was researching this and people have claimed that this technique adds protein to the cup of coffee, which I'm not really sure of because isn't that where all the protein is? Isn't that all of the protein? Yeah, I'm not sure how much would actually be in the coffee itself, but at any rate, it's delicious. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I hope you guys learned something. Please share this video with your friends. Follow me on social media so you can see what videos are coming up next and what I am doing in my life outside of making these videos. And I shall see you in my next one. Toodaloo. Take care. Bye.